Hey there, there's three things that I want to note about this video before we get started. One, please excuse my poor pronunciation of anything in this video. I really tried my best. Number two, this video deals with some potentially touchy subject matter, such as sexuality and pornography, and at one point, cases of abuse. So, uh, And given that this is a photo channel, there will be photos shown that may not be suitable for everyone here. Because of that, number three, I'm going to be blurring some images uh, due to avoiding issues with YouTube regulations and policies. Just keep that in mind that the blurring alterations were done by me and are not the original intent of the artist. And with that out of the way, let's get on to the video. Nobuyoshi Araki, the renowned and influential Japanese photographer, captures subjects like sex clubs, cats, rope bondage, nude women, and honeymoon bliss. His work blurs boundaries between high art, photobiography, and pornography, challenging both Western and Japanese notions of propriety and self-expression. Araki's prolific output and distinct style have garnered him global recognition. However, he has faced backlash for violating obscenity laws and has been criticized for reinforcing harmful stereotypes of Japanese women. But despite this, his supporters argue that he has continued a long-standing tradition of erotic art in Japan. So today, I wanted to shine the spotlight onto Nobuyoshi Araki. Nobuyoshi Araki's roots lie in the vibrant streets of Shitaya, a bygone district nestled in the heart of Tokyo. It was within this urban tapestry that he encountered his first glimpses of photography, thanks to his father, who had a hidden passion for capturing moments in time. Araki belongs to a remarkable cohort of Japanese individuals who blossomed in the wake of World War II. Their coming of age coincided with a nation fiercely rebuilding itself, after a devastating military defeat at the hands of the Allies. Japan, under the occupation of American forces until 1952, experienced a seismic shift marked by societal convulsions and economic tribulations that reverberated through its populace. Between 1959 and 1963, Araki pursued film and photography studies at Chiba University, close to his Tokyo roots. However, he found the program's rigid technicality dissatisfying as it resided within the confines of the engineering department. As a part of his final project, Araki crafted Children in Apartment Blocks, which later morphed into his early photo series, Sachin, in 1964, which ultimately secured award recognition. In Araki's inaugural series, Sachin, captivating black and white photographs capture the contagious laughter of a charismatic neighborhood boy named Sachin. Here he is on the ground, doubled over in mirth. Sachin is playfully tickled by his older brother, Mabo. Additional images within the series unveil the boys wielding slingshots, engaged in playful wrestling, and frolicking through the dilapidated apartment blocks of Shiramachi. These images exude a wistful nostalgia for childhood, evoking an almost audible symphony of laughter and gleeful shouts. Araki himself shared, In the boy called Sachin, I glimpsed my own childhood. I captured these pictures from a child's perspective. As a series, these photographs reveal the enduring shabbiness of post-occupation Tokyo, juxtaposing the backdrop of poverty with a vibrant vitality embodied by Araki's youthful subjects. Following his academic endeavors, Araki found himself employed as a commercial photographer at the Dentsu Advertising Agency. However, the humdrum nature of his job failed to captivate him. Nonetheless, he seized the opportunity to advance his independent photographic ventures by utilizing the agency's facilities, even resorting to their photocopier to birth one of his earliest photo books, the Xerox photo albums. A year later, fate intertwined his path with that of Yoko Aoki, an essayist who would later become his cherished life partner. These two encounters, the passing of his father in 1967 and the arrival of a profound love of his life, according to art historian Matthew Cluck, served as pivotal junctures shaping Araki's artistry. In Cluck's words, 
death and love would become two of the principal driving forces behind Araki's profoundly human photography. Araki entered a prolific phase, capturing his life and muses, with Yoko becoming his beloved and frequently photographed subject. Buoyed by his success, Araki left his job at Dentsu the following year, dedicating himself entirely to his art. His prolific output encompassed various themes such as life with Yoko, nature, flowers, the city, and his pets. Collaborations with magazines and models allowed him to delve into his own obsessions and experiences, resulting in numerous exhibitions, photo books, and articles. As his body of work grew, Araki garnered increasing recognition within the art world, solidifying his status as a prominent voice in Japanese photography. Throughout the 1970s and 80s, Araki pushed boundaries with his provocative sex photography, skillfully straddling the line between art and pornography. During the vibrant late 1970s and early 1980s, Japan witnessed a flourishing sex industry, captivating the attention of Araki. Fearlessly venturing into sex clubs, private orgies, and illicit gatherings, he skillfully documented the people and scenes he encountered. Araki compiled some images into the photo book Tokyo Lucky Hole in 1997. Named after one of the popular sex clubs he explored in Tokyo. This series encompasses a broad spectrum of imagery, ranging from exterior shots of sex clubs and semi-nude girls enticing potential customers at doorways, to graphic depictions of sexual acts taking place within these establishments. Arts and culture writer Alina Cohen emphasizes Araki's role as a perceptive observer of the raucous and seemingly joyful community, where sex becomes an integral aspect of the city's character. Photographer Barry W. Hughes describes Tokyo Lucky Hole as a transformative experience, describing it as a proverbial punch in the eye. Hughes celebrates Tokyo Lucky Hole as a compendium of unashamed, gloriously troublesome deviancy. In February 1985, the Japanese government passed the New Amusement Business Control and Improvement Act, leading to the closure of many sex entertainment venues captured by Araki for Tokyo Lucky Hole. Thus, the photo book serves as a captivating historical document of the unique period between 1978 and 1985 when Tokyo's residents were able to explore their sexual desires and fantasies more openly. The act also impacted artistic production resulting in harsh censorship that affected artists like Araki. He valiantly fought against the censorship for several years, playing a vital role in the government's subsequent repeal of certain indecency laws. During a pivotal phase in his career, Araki embarked on an extensive series of photographs featuring kinbaku, a form of ritualistic bondage with historical roots in the Edo period. In this particular image, the taut ropes encircle and accentuate the model's breasts, while her gaze directs away from the camera. The composition is not only sexually charged, but also aesthetically intriguing, with the interplay of shadows, disheveled clothing, and tussled hair defying the conventional image of a composed Japanese courtesan. The model's expression remains ambiguous, devoid of explicit sexual excitement or enthusiastic participation complicating the viewer's relationship with the depicted action. This complexity is further heightened within the context of the pervasive sexualization and infantilization of Japanese women prevalent in pornography. Criticism from Western audiences often revolves around the perceived misogyny and objectification or fetishization of women in Iraqi's bondage photographs. However, some scholars contend that a comprehensive understanding will require interpreting these images through their cultural context. Araki's images of rope-bound women draw inspiration not only from highly structured kimbaku bondage technique, but also from traditional elements of Japanese art and culture. Araki's international recognition grew through his participation in the New Photography o Japan exhibition in Austria in 1977. The exhibition showcased the emerging wave of post-war Japanese photography, featuring works by Araki, Daido Moriyama, and Yoshihiro Tatsuki. It garnered substantial attention, exposing European audiences to the perspectives of artists in Japan's re-emerging global economy. While his work was acknowledged as explicit, critics and curators in the US and Europe positioned it within the vanguard of new subjectivism in Japanese photography, elevating his profile in the international art scene. 
exploring Japan's underground pornography scene and sex clubs, Araki continued to document explicit imagery throughout the 1980s and 1990s. These daring photographs portraying pornographic theaters, orgies, and sex workers were compiled into a series of photo books. Legal repercussions followed as he faced fines for an obscene exhibition in 1992, and police arrested gallery workers in 1993 for selling his erotic book, Eratos. Araki's Eratos series masterfully weaves together the core themes that drive his work. Love, personified by Eros, and death, personified by Thanatos, the ancient Greek symbol of death. As expected, all the images within this series exude a highly erotic essence. Some depict explicit scenes of nudity and sexual encounters, while others subtly allude to sexuality, sexual organs, and mortality through close-ups of blooming or decaying flowers and overripe fruit. While some viewers perceive Araki's exploration of the intersection between sex and death as deviant, he explains his belief that these two forces underpin the profound journey of life. Sex begets life, while death marks its culmination, an enduring dichotomy that Araki has ceaselessly explored throughout his artistic career. Yoko, Araki's cherished wife and muse, tragically passed away from ovarian cancer in 1990. In the face of grief, Araki found solace in his photography capturing images imbued with melancholy and solitude. His lens turned to Yoko's cat, the intimate corners of his home, flowers and tiny plastic dinosaurs that became his companions. During his honeymoon with Yoko in 1971, Araki seized the opportunity to document their journey using a newly purchased camera. This particular image captures Yoko peacefully asleep on a rowboat, floating along the Yanagawa River. This particular photograph holds great significance for Araki, resonating in its composition that seemingly foreshadowed Yoko's untimely passing. Araki mused on its deeper meaning, explaining, In Japan, we say that you cross the Sanzu River when you depart to the other world. I had no intention of taking a picture like that. So, I feel that maybe God or someone made me take that picture. Her posture is like that of a fetus. Also, in the area where I grew up, we rest the deceased on rush mats. She happened to be sleeping on a rush mat. All by coincidence, it was all there. Curator Maggie Mustard emphasizes the centrality of Araki's relationship with Yoko, labeling it as the nucleus of his most iconic work. In 1992, Araki crossed paths with Swiss photographer and filmmaker Robert Frank during the latter's visit to Japan. The two artists connected through their shared utilization of the camera to navigate the complexities of grief. That same year, Araki published Sentimental Journey, Winter Journey, 1972-1992, a poignant documentation of his relationship with Yoko, encompassing their early days of fervent love to the trying years when illness took its toll. In 2008, Araki was diagnosed with prostate cancer. Successfully, he underwent surgery for its removal. A retinal artery obstruction in October of 2013 left the artist with impaired vision in his right eye, inspiring the creation of the exhibition Love on the Left Eye in 2014. Araki's recent endeavors have included collaborations with renowned figures such as Bjork, Lady Gaga, and various luxury brands. His artistic drive remains fervent, as exemplified by Bjork's testament. I think an, an artist like Araki is going to do everything 9,000%. It doesn't matter what it is. Here's the part where I mentioned that it should be noted that Araki's reputation has been marred by allegations of sexual misconduct involving former models who bravely shared their traumatic experiences. Highlighting the absence of contracts, uh, coerced participation in explicit shoots before strangers, irregular payments, and unauthorized use of nude photos. Araki's artistic legacy unfolds through an expansive and remarkably diverse body of work, spanning over 500 photo books, influencing photographers across various genres. His impact encompasses street photography, documentary photography, portraiture, erotic photography, and so much more. Arts and culture writer Alina Cohen underscores the unmistakable and instantly recognizable quality of Araki's aesthetic, 
whether he captures rope-bound women, gritty group encounters in Tokyo, or eroticized depictions of flowers. However, Araki's greatest impact lies in the heated debates that his career has ignited concerning the line between art and pornography. Discussions surrounding his work range from viewing it as brilliant conceptual photography and a celebration of intimacy to accusations of misogyny and gratuitous pornography. The question of whether Araki is an esteemed master or a lecherous voyeur prompts divergent perspectives. Some scholars see Araki's work as a celebration of women, while others, including art critic Taki Koji, acknowledge the presence of a raping gaze in Araki's voyeuristic style. Ultimately, interpreting Araki's oeuvre is a deeply personal choice, with each viewer left to grapple with the complexities and contradictions inherent in his provocative imagery. Personally, I would say I'm still grappling with those complexities myself. Thank you all so much for watching. This was a bit of an intense video to make, but an enlightening one all the same. Um, and one that coincided with my recent video about nudity in photography. Uh, you can check that one out as well. Be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell for notifications when new videos are released. And I'll leave you all with some more photos by the polarizing and undeniably talented Nobuyoshi Araki.